Hi everybody, I'm Scott and I'm back with another gift from my wife, uh, just like the Japan Crate video. This time she wasn't sure if I'd like this gift, but uh, I really do, at least in theory. I haven't tested it out yet, but this is the AGIC circuit marker and some a paper, which is I think pretty much just photo paper, some LEDs that are able to stick onto this paper, and a circuit eraser pen. The idea of it being that you draw on this paper with this marker and it creates a conductive path and you can prototype a circuit with it. You can learn more about AGIC at the website agic.cc. I'm not going to get too much into it, but I like the uh, company in the, in the sense that it started as a research paper, turned into a Kickstarter, and then turned into a real company from there. And they're based in Tokyo. And uh, not only do they sell this product for, well, I guess hobbyists, but they also sell printers that can print this ink for, uh, I guess, more intensive prototyping. And they'll also print circuits on PET film for permanent and professional use. They say it'll last up to 10 years. The main advantage of this system is, well, speed, because you can just draw whatever circuits you want rather than having to print them out, transfer them onto a PCB, etch it, uh, well, develop it first, and then uh, drill your holes. The disadvantage is, of course, that you can't solder onto this, although I have my soldering iron because I'm going to try, even though this is obviously paper and it's photo paper covered in some kind of, I don't know what the gloss is made of, some kind of plastic, I'm assuming. Probably just melt right away. But, you know, you got to try things. And they kind of imply that you need to use their special paper for this, but on the back of the marker, it says, can only be used on gloss photo papers. It doesn't specifically say that you need to use this paper. So the principle is that you uh, draw your circuit. I'm not sure how the marker's just starting off a little slow, it looks like. And in theory, that should now be conductive. Uh, I'm not sure if it needs to dry or not, but if it's conductive ink, it should work right away. All right, a bit of resistance, 2.1 ohms, and that looks like oh, about a centimeter between the two probes. Another thing that my wife got me was this circuit eraser, which I'm wondering how it works. I think it just rubs, physically rubs the ink off of the paper. Yeah, it looks like uh, that's what it does. It takes it up. Ooh, I think it's just alcohol, isopropyl by the smell of it. And it comes with a couple of spare tips. Because I'm assuming as this gets soaked in the silver ink, it'll eventually become useless and we'll probably just end up drawing instead of erasing. Okay, so now that at least I know it's conductive and it draws on this paper as it claims to, let's check out these LEDs. So what I've read about this is that the best way to adhere components to ink is using either a conductive epoxy or a circuit drawing paint, which is obviously also conductive. You can sort of blob it on there and stick a normal component to it. These are little pads with adhesive on the back and little copper uh, electrodes that stick through the adhesive and just protrude a little bit past the surface. And it looks like uh, it's preloaded with a resistor, unless that's a protection diode, and two LEDs. And these are red LEDs. So I guess uh, before... And I'm kind of hoping that's a resistor. Actually, I guess we should check that before I just apply some current to it. Ah, 469 ohms. So 470 ohms. Okay, so it is a resistor. So I should be able to connect the voltage right up to this. Um, no indication of which is positive and which is negative. Hmm. So I'll start at one volt and just see if I can get a little glow out of the LEDs and hopefully not uh, fry them in the process. Okay, just turn that up a little. Go to two volts. Oh, there we go. Oh, there might be two LEDs, each with a different bias. So let's see if the other one lights. Yep. Okay, so it appears to be, I'm just going to take a closer look at this. 
That resistor is labeled. I don't have a magnifier with me, but I'm sure it's uh, 470 ohms. So I suppose the idea here is that if we just want to connect to one LED and have it light, I can just provide two circuit paths right up the edge of the paper, the same distance apart as the LED's electrodes. Actually, let me go a little farther up just so I'm not uh, right at the edge. And it comes three LEDs to a package along with three extra adhesive strips so that you can reuse them. And then if we put that right across there and stick it down, we should in theory have conductivity. And rather than test it, I'm just gonna hook up my power supply directly to it. And hopefully, yep, the LED lights. I'm at two volts, I'm gonna just nudge it up to three. And it lights brightly enough. Uh, so, okay, the system works as they have it. And of course, you could go on and draw more complex circuits. I don't have any other stick-on components, so one thing I wanted to try just for fun, like I said, this probably is not gonna turn out well, is soldering to this. So what I'm gonna do is just create a nice thick line right there. And I'm just gonna take any old resistor. I'll leave the lead nice and long so I can reuse it. I wanna position it so that it's as flat as possible against the paper which that did not do. From what I found online, the most common way of just connecting one of these together really quickly is to get a lot of surface area contact between the ink and the component and use a bit of paint. Uh, well, I'm using painter's tape here, but use a bit of tape to tack it down and providing the tape holds and it actually sticks it onto the paper. In theory, that should work. So. We're getting 324 ohms across the resistor and 326 ohms between this. So that did make a connection. I wouldn't necessarily rely on this connection. Um, it's not exactly the most robust thing in the world. And of course I could have cut the tape a bit neater. Interestingly, the tape didn't really peel off too much of the silver ink. In fact, there should be enough on there now I have my soldering iron set to 302 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the lowest it'll go. I think I might have lower powered irons lying around somewhere, but this is probably better off being quick rather than cool. And I have, um, my tip's a little dirty, and this is the thinnest solder I have. So it should melt nice and quickly. But of course I can't really heat up the silver ink too much before applying it, so Ah, soldering irons are not really hot enough to run to flow this solder terribly well. And this is lead lead based solder too, so it should have fairly low melting point. Okay. The problem might be that the silver ink isn't really heating up enough to take the solder. I mean, I just ended up with a lot of flux on there, but it did not really burn the paper, which is interesting. So even though I held it on there for a reasonable amount of time, but let's see, with some flux already in place, maybe I could sort of bodge this together. No. Well, that's a shame. Although it didn't become the kind of disaster I expected because I expected the paper to uh, start singeing or just burst into flames outright. But as they say, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Or is it that they say repeating the same thing expecting a different result is the definition of insanity? But in either case, regardless of which adage is true, I'm just gonna try this again on a fresh, freshly drawn track. And this time I'll let the heat get in there hopefully 
Okay, well I got a blob of solder on there. It's not exactly the neatest job in the world. And uh, just give it a second to cool. Okay, I mean, the resistor is tacked on there. And somewhat firmly. Probably a little more firmly than just having it stuck on there with a piece of tape. But uh, still. Maybe I should let the pen mark dry completely. And rather than going over it a second time, let me just do one mark, let it dry, and then see if this works out better. This does seem like a terrible idea, though. I, I don't really expect it to work, but... I mean, you had to be curious, too, right? Okay, well, that appears to be dry now. So, uh, oh, I don't have my snips right here, but let me take that end off. And let me try to get heat... I should have cleaned this iron off first, but you know what? The blob of solder that was on there will probably help me transfer more heat into the ink. Not really a good joint there again. Yeah, it's hard to flow a good joint on this. I think, like I said, it's because the, uh, there's not enough thermal mass on the silver ink to hold the heat. If that makes sense. Just want to let that cool a little bit before I start pulling on it. Uh, that seems to be a much better joint than the last one. All right, that's on there pretty good. So let's see what I have before. 326 ohms. Ah, 324 ohms through the uh, silver trace. 326 ohms. As I get farther away, of course, the resistance increases. 327. And I'm not getting a lot, of far, lot farther away. I'm going like 2 millimeters at a time there at the end. So, so quite a lot of resistance from this uh, ink. But it's a very thin veneer, so what do you expect? But yeah, this is on here pretty good this time. And when I pull it off, I'm just... Yeah, it actually did pull off the top layer of the paper. So it adhered to the ink quite well in the end. So I'm thinking maybe once you get the technique down, you could probably uh, get pretty efficient at soldering components to this. And of course, surface mount components would probably work the best, even though they are a pain in the ass to use with a handheld soldering iron. But, uh, and it's not like you could draw terribly thin tracks. I mean, I guess that's the other issue with that. I was drawing with the uh, flat side of the chisel blade, but if you draw it this way, you get a little bit thinner. And of course, you draw it with just the tip but you keep, the more pressure you put, the wider the track becomes. And you got to put at least some pressure in order to really lay down some ink. And I'm just wondering what kind of resistance we get. I'm going to put these again. I'm not measuring, but maybe about a centimeter apart. And I'm getting 5 ohms. So you have to take the resistance into account quite a bit when you're using this, because it's not like an etched copper PCB where your resistance is going to be minimal over these short distances. In fact, let's see, if I go, let's say this paper's roughly six inches, whoops, not exactly the smoothest line, but, so that's roughly a five inch line, I'm not sure what that is in good old metric, although I probably should know, and there we're at nearly 100 ohms, 93, yeah, 92 ohms, so call it around there, so, Quite significant if you were going to lay a track around the outside to provide a power rail or something. Okay, so another thing I wanted to test, like I said, this is the special paper that shipped with the pen that the uh, that AGIC sells. I also have some Canon photo paper. It says uh, photo paper plus glossy two. I don't know why that sounds so grand, but this came for free with a really cheap Canon printer. So this is probably bottom of the barrel photo paper. It's actually a little thicker. It's a little heavier stock though than this paper. Um, see this is very floppy, this one less so. And I'd imagine that this is going to work just about as well. Laying it down I got a little more resistance. Um, there's a little more friction between the pen and the surface of the paper, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. It seemed to lay down a heavier uh, coating of ink as well, which is probably a good thing. Again, I'm just roughly a centimeter apart, and I'm getting two ohms. 
So there are three ohms, thereabouts. And just to double check, if I go eyeballing the same distance on this track that I just laid down this existing paper, I'm at 11, 10 ohms. So that's a significant difference, even if I'm a little bit off in my spacing of the probes here, seven ohms. So yeah, on this Canon photo paper, like I said, I felt a lot more friction. I drew a little more slowly because of it, laid down a thicker coat of ink, which of course weights the pen faster, but less resistance. So that might be desirable. I'm also worried though that the pen might be taking up some of this coating on the photo paper and it might eventually gum up the tip. So it might not be the best thing to do, but it does work at least ostensibly. And now just for the sake of argument, this is just glossy paper. It's not photo paper. It's much cheaper than photo paper though. It's sold in reams of 500 sheets. And so if you want to knock out a bunch of stuff or waste this testing stuff out, it's the cheaper option. Okay, much uh, less friction than the Canon paper. Felt as far as friction goes more like the paper that came with the pen. Seemed to lay down a thin coat as well. And if we go with roughly the same spacing, I am getting no continuity at all. Yeah. And the meter's set to two kilo ohms, so. Set it up to two mega ohm. Ooh. Yeah, barely getting contact there, but okay, resistance is very high. That's probably because this paper is a little more porous, and um, I'm guessing if the ink soaks into the pores, it'll create microscopic gaps in the, con in the connection. So not too great there. So my hopes are even lower for this standard paper, which just happens to be black. I figured it would show up better with the ink on camera. And if I lay down a little strip there, I'm guessing that I'm also not going to get any meaningful continuity here. Yeah, again, no continuity. And if I turn it up to two mega ohms, no continuity. So standard paper will not work, but standard off the shelf photo paper will. So last of all, I want to try this silver metallic Sharpie. Now I'm guessing it has some kind of metal in it because it is silvery in color, but it undoubtedly doesn't have actual silver in it, which this pen does, which is why this pen costs $15 and this one costs, I think, like 50 cents, maybe a dollar, something like that. And by the way, that's the uh, name of the company is AGIC, AG being the symbol for silver and IC meaning not integrated circuit, which is what I first thought, but ink circuit, ink circuit, yes. But just for the sake of argument, I happen to have this little Sharpie pen hanging around and I figure why not test it out under the same circumstance. Yeah, I still have it set to two mega ohms and I'm not seeing any conductivity, even if I get fairly close. And I'm just wondering if I lay down a very thick blob of it, see if we get anything from there. Kind of want to let it dry first so I don't get this non-conductive paint all over my multimeter probes. Nothing. Nope, so this Sharpie pen is useless. So I didn't really think it would work, but um, it was worth a try anyway. And the last thing I want to try with this pen is one of these solderable breadboards. And basically it's just a bunch of holes with solder pads around them, some of which have uh, continuity between them, some which don't. And just like a regular breadboard, you use jumpers to go between components. But I'm wondering what would happen if I took the silver pen and instead of jumpering between holes, I actually drew in between the holes. Nah, I kind of went wide there. Yep, I'm just making a mess of this. So let me get all these pads, in theory, 
give all these pads continuity to each other. So I hope that came out on camera. I think it did. So you can see it comes out very black on this surface. So if I go from, yeah, we could go down to 2K on the scale. So if I go from this pad to this pad, no continuity. And if I go from there to there, no continuity. But just to show you that my meter is working, if I go on the same pad, we have continuity, zero ohms. That's kind of a shame, because I thought that would be really cool if, um, like I said, instead of using jumpers between these pads, I could just uh, draw a, a quick line between them. Again, I think that this uh, circuit board, actually the material doesn't look too porous though. I mean, well the ink didn't really dry either. It's uh, coming off my finger. Whereas on the photo paper, it seems to dry. I mean, it is intended for use on photo paper. So I'm not completely shocked that this didn't work. Just color it in a little more darkly and let me see. No, no continuity. That's such a shame. That would have been really cool. Because like I said, the main problem with putting it on paper is that it's hard to attach components to it. And the thing that sucks about this is all the jumpers that you have to put in, but this, this would have been cool. That's a shame. Another advantage that I didn't note about doing uh, circuits on paper is, of course, that the paper is flexible. But if you're connecting everything with tape, then your flexibility is really going to be limited because uh, as soon as you flex it too much, it's probably going to pop something loose. Uh, if you use an epoxy, a, a conductive epoxy, or uh, conductive paint to sort of tack it down, you probably have better luck, especially with the epoxy. Um, and if you solder it down, you should have uh, pretty good luck too if you can get the technique down. In fact, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to turn my soldering iron up. Let's say to 376 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll just wait for it to come up to temperature. Okay, so now this will be a test of two things. One, to see if my technique has improved at all. And second, to see this is the Canon photo paper right now. And so we'll see if I can also solder to that. Like I said, I, this might work better because I think it got a thicker coating of the ink on this. So let me turn it that way. Okay, so soldering iron display is at 380 right now. So kind of heat the whole thing all at once. Uh, the the problem is, unlike a through-hole mounting, there's nothing to keep the component in place. And it, it's sticking to the solder, you know? This is kind of a pain in the ass. I'm just wondering what had happened if instead I tinned, I effectively tinned the lead of the component. What if I tin the ink surface first? Yeah, I kind of just put down a, some resin next to a blob of solder. That probably did not get good adhesion to the paper. Uh, no, actually it did. But unfortunately where this resist, uh, I mean where this uh, flux came out, it seems to have damaged the, uh, the circuit path. So that's kind of unfortunate. Well, let's see if we can cheat this on here. Now the solder flowed and all got taken up by the component and the iron itself. So yeah, I'm sure one could develop a technique because I did get one reasonably good joint. So, and I've only tried this a couple of times. So in theory, I think with practice, this would be doable. It's probably by no means recommended by anyone. I'm not even recommending it, but Ah, I think this might be the Canon photo paper because it looks like I'm melting a hole through the uh, protective coating on the paper, which wasn't happening quite as severely on the, uh, on the AGIC supplied paper. So, you know what, I'll give that one more shot. And this time again, it's with the much hotter solder soldering iron. That could have also been the cause of melting the crap out of that Canon paper. 
Yeah, it's just not getting heat onto the silver, onto the uh, silver ink. Yeah, the uh, the resin is sticking nicely, but the solder is not sticking to it. Oddly enough, oh, I got a blob on there. That's probably not going to make a good joint, though. Yeah, that made another crappy joint. So I think a cooler soldering iron is probably the better move. Um, it seemed to work much better because, again, it seems to be just melting the surface of the photo paper a little bit. Initially, I had this set to, I think, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, anyway, that's all I have about the AGIC pen for now. If I accomplish some other cool projects, I might share them with you. Um, overall, it's a neat idea. I'm not sure how useful it would be for me prototyping a project because it doesn't have much durability and the tracks end up being pretty thick. It's hard to connect components to it. But as a gift, and I'm not just saying this because my wife got it for me, I swear. As a gift, it's pretty cool because it did give me the entertainment of playing with it and making this video for you. So, um, but for actually prototyping something I'd want to use and bring around with me and maybe even get banged around a little, I would stick with a solderable breadboard at least, um, if not uh, etching my own. Well, thanks for watching. That's been my video about the AGIC silver ink marker. Yeah. I hope it was what you were looking for. I know it wasn't a comprehensive tutorial on how to use it, but really I just wanted to experiment with it. I think there's plenty of other videos out there that you can find about uh, more in-depth circuits and what you can do with it artistically. I just really wanted to see if you could solder to it, frankly. And uh, you can and you can't. So, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, I hope it was what you were looking for. Subscribe. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Whatever, I don't make any money off this. And uh, yeah, I'm still bad at conclusions.